Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I use Dolly 3 from ChatGPT to generate these New Year's images, and they'll be available as a free download on my GitHub page. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And a couple of weeks ago, I did a video about using Dolly 3, which is now embedded in ChatGPT Plus, which you can get for a $20 a month subscription. You can get access to that. I used Dolly 3 in the prior video to generate images suitable uh, for image tracing and then laser cutting. And I was doing Christmas images, and I post those on a GitHub page where you can download them for free. So now I'm, I'm doing the same thing here for New Year's. My intent is to go ahead and do every holiday as we go through the year, and uh, they'll all be available for free. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel, and you'll always know when I put something up. I'm also going to be doing themes, you know, like beach or lighthouses or sports or, you know, if you have something I'd like, you'd like me to work on, just let me know in the comments, and I'll put that into my schedule if I can. So the last video for Christmas, I was looking for things that were standalone that I could hang like an ornament. So I did a star and a, a ornate Christmas tree and a snowflake and Santa sleigh and his reindeer. And I really struggled. If you watch that video, you'll see I really struggled sometimes to get Dolly 3 to do what I wanted it to do until I kind of hit on the magic words, which were, you know, do this black image against isolated against a white background. And, and that kind of forced it to get rid of all the fancy stuff it was doing in the background just to make the picture interesting, because it, it loves to make the pictures interesting. And that's not really what's best for laser cutting. So, um, so that approach that I use for generating ornaments is the same thing I did here with these number balloons. Um, I've put these on a blue background so you can see them. I would, of course, put them out in a straight line to say 2024. And you could put strings on the bottom because there's the little nubs on the bottom of the balloons and stuff. You can do fun stuff with this. And you can apply these cutout things to other things you're working on. You could use it as a gift tag. So, so there's a lot of value in this kind of a cutout. But what I did in these three is to work on a stencil style image. And what's good about a stencil, and you've worked with a stencil, you know how they are. You have a single piece of, you know, plastic that you lay down on a surface and you create the image by spray painting over it or pouncing paint into the holes or whatever. The holes are the picture, right? They're, that's what makes up the image. What's really great about a stencil is that it still gives you one piece that is the whole image. So if you look at something like this, I have a very complex image with a lot of stuff going on in the background like Dolly 3 likes to do, but it's still just one piece of wood I cut out. And then I can take that one piece of wood and glue it to a contrasting color background and get a very interesting complex image. And so that's really the approach I used for these three. So if you stick with me and watch some of that session, you'll see uh, how I generated these. It's actually easier to generate these than it is something where they're isolated on a background. And uh, as I said, once again, um, these images will be posted as the video is posted so that you can do a free download if you're interested in using any of them for, for this New Year's. So let's get started. Um, I'll show you a little bit of the session with Dolly 3. I'll show you taking it in and doing an image trace on it. I use Illustrator. You could use something else. Um, and then I take it into Lightburn and cut it. So I'll show you all that in this episode. I started my session with Dolly 3 by asking it, what are some of the most commonly used images for New Year's? And it gave me a nice list of 10 things. And I'm going to use that list to guide what I ask for in the session. So I started with the champagne bottles and glasses, and I used the vocabulary that I refined in my last video. And I asked for a black silhouette style image isolated against white. And this is what it gave me that 
ended up being my favorite image, and it's the first one it provided. But even though I'm using the word stencil, I'm really thinking I want a continuous, the black part to be a continuous single piece, and this isn't, so I asked to simplify it. I say, give me a single bottle with two glasses and take the circles out of the background, and this is what it gives me. If I cut this image, all those black pieces are just going to fall apart. So I try another approach, and I say, give me the inverse of this. Switch the black and the white. And you'll notice it doesn't just switch the black and white. It actually changes the whole image. One thing you'll learn about Dolly is that it never does the same image twice. Every time it generates something, it's brand new. So I say, give me the exact inverse of the last image, and once again, it changes it completely. Though I have to say, this is a pretty nice picture. It wasn't until the next day that I actually had the mental breakthrough, the understanding that when I told it stencil, it was making the white background continuous, not the black image. But at the moment, I just gave up on this, and I switched, and I went on to party hats and sound makers, and I asked, which is another one on the list of 10, and I asked for a picture of that, and this is what it gave me. Now, this would have worked if it didn't have that gray all along the edges, which I could have taken out, but I still had this mental uh, block that I was trying to get a black continuous piece. And I try different words, and I get another busy image that won't work. I try to simplify it, and I get these two hats and two noisemakers, and it's better, but it's still not continuous. And I'll just fast forward here and show you all my attempts for party hats and noisemakers. And I'm not even sure it knows what a noisemaker is, but I gave up. So I move on to balloons shaped like numbers, and I ask for that. And I ask for nothing in the background and no shadows, no shadows. And this is what it gives me. I see that the two and the four have been creatively combined into a single number. That wasn't going to work. But then I got this nice clean big two if I had just asked for the two and that was perfect. I asked for the zero and the four and I asked for a little simplification on some of the highlighting and I ended up with the numbers I really liked. So now I moved on to the baby with the banner with the year number on it and it gave me this baby kind of a take charge uh, baby there with the hands on the hips but I, I settled for that. And I moved on to the clock striking midnight, and then I had all sorts of struggles that kept giving me too many hands on the clock. It wasn't pointed at midnight. I kept trying different things, and I ended up giving up on that one. So I went back to champagne bottles and glasses and uh, got a couple variants. I really like this one here. It's one of the ones I end up cutting. But like I said, it wasn't even until the next day that I realized I had a lot of good material here to work with if I just uh, processed it a little different in Illustrator. So you start by placing the reference image in the drawing. Now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to put it underneath the reference image. And I'm going to draw the square the size I want. This is going to be the size of the final picture and I fill it with a easy to see color. And then I make the layer with the reference image visible again and I'm going to center that in the middle of the background square by using the alignment tools. And now I'm going to run the image trace and here I have to tell it to ignore the white so I don't get duplicates. I turn preview on, I ask for the outlines if I like what I see it's selecting, I say expand, and then it does the image trace. So now I'm going to make the bottle and the glasses uh, bigger so they fill the frame better. And I'm going to select both that traced image and the background square, and I'm going to use Pathfinder and say minus front. And it basically punches out the black image out of the green square. I select that and I say ungroup and now when I select it I can actually see what's going to fall away what isn't connected to the rest of the image and it's really just some bubbles and some highlights on the bottle and that's fine with me. I just go ahead and I get rid of the green fill. I turn the lines red which are cut lines for my laser cutter. You should select everything and regroup it. 
You can test to see if you've really done this all correctly by just selecting it and doing a fill. I'll put a black fill in. If what you see there is what you uh, want as your final result, you've done it correctly. The only thing left to do is to export this as an SVG, and of course an SVG can be imported into Lightburn and, and cut. You'll also need to cut a square for the background. I used 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood for my images. Here I am cutting the, the first one that Dolly 3 created for me, and, and still my favorite. Um, for the background though, I just used 1 16th inch plywood. For the baby, you might want to grab the center of that zero and glue it in later so the number looks a little bit better. You could do the same th thing with the four, but it's kind of small. Here are the balloon numbers. Uh, they turned out quite well. The only thing you lose from this picture is the highlight on the top of the bottle. I didn't think it was important, so I didn't add it. I talked uh, quite a bit about painting in my last video, but I'll just mention here that I do use a gel plate and a brayer for applying paint, especially important for the laser cut components. I would also recommend sanding off any kind of shiny finish from the background pieces of the plywood so the paint adheres better. I did a silver background for the baby with a black foreground, the blue and the gold balloons. I just did black and white for my bottles. So those are just laying together after painting, but you have to actually glue them. And uh, I always use these granite uh, samples to weigh down my pieces while they're gluing. I really like the more complex images that you can do with the stencil approach, so I'm going to be doing a lot of that in the future. If you're interested, please subscribe to the channel and share this with others.